Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Open Source Tonight. I'm Vincent, and today I wanted to talk about the Apple M1 transition, and well, Apple's ARM in general transition that they're currently going through. And I, well, I know what you're saying. Linux? This is not the Linux and open source channel? Yes, it is. And, and this is related, so don't click away. So, for one thing, Linux is slowly being ported to that. Um, but what I wanted to talk about in today's video is, if you didn't already read the title, which I don't know how you got here, otherwise I guess autoplay, is whether or not that Apple switching to ARM processors will accelerate ARM64 support under Linux and under Windows. Now, for those that don't want to spend 30 minutes, well, it's not going to be 30 minutes, hopefully, but for those that don't want to spend a while listening to me talk about this, the answer is yes. I think that Microsoft and the Linux side of the computing world is going to move towards ARM more than it already has. Microsoft already has Windows on ARM and has for a little while now, and Linux, of course, has been running on ARM processors and MIPS processors and all kinds of stuff for years. This isn't exactly news to anybody. Ever heard of a Raspberry Pi, anybody? I mean, you know what I mean? That's all ARM. So, um, anyway, I think that that's what's going to happen is we're going to see a movement towards more ARM support. Now, personally, as someone that actually prefers the ARM architecture, uh, I feel like it. you're getting a really good performance for the actual CPU. Now, I'm more of a software person, so take that with a grain of salt on how much that my opinion's worth on this one. But in my opinion, it seems to me that the ARM processors are very affordable. They're low power compared to the equivalents from other uh, vendors uh, doing like x86 CPUs. And finally, of course, those are customizable because you can actually license from ARM's holdings, which is being bought by NVIDIA right now. Uh, to be able to do your own custom ARM chips. So I think between those three, there was three things that ARM processors, we're gonna see a push for them to take off. We already see ARM processors in the mobile space heavily. Uh, pick up an iPhone, running an ARM processor. Pick up an Android phone, there's a pretty good chance it's running an ARM processor from Qualcomm or somebody like that. And so wherever you look, ARM is being used, excluding the desktop space, um, IOT systems, Internet of Things devices like um, smart speakers and stuff like that. I would be willing to bet you that if you ripped one of those open and don't do that, <laughs> but I'd be willing to bet you if you did, there's a good chance that there's an ARM processor inside of that system because they're low power, they're efficient, and so they make sense for mobile devices and computing devices that just need to be in a little box sitting over in the corner. So really, at this point, excluding our desktop PCs and our laptops, pretty much Almost all the computing devices around us, I would say at this point, is running ARM processors. So really, this is just the ARM processor finally actually having a shot at the desktop market, maybe. Now, some people have said for years that ARM's going to take off, and it hasn't. And I'm not one of those people. Um, I wish it would have taken off for the last little bit. And now, thanks to Apple, I do think, like I said, we're going to see that push towards a Microsoft and a Linux and an Apple ARM using world. Microsoft has recently announced that they are going to make their own ARM processors for their computers. Of course, on Linux, we've got the Raspberry Pi and uh, what is it? The Pine devices. I've got like the Pine, what is it? Laptop, the Pine book, I believe it is, that is running an ARM processor and you can run Linux on that, of course. And so I think we're going to see a bigger push. What's really going to hold it back, though, you might be asking. Very simple, simple question to answer. And that is software developers. That's right. I'm a software developer. It's all my fault. I mean, well, maybe not just mine, but us software developers need to build applications that are designed to run on your ARM64 CPU. Depending on the language it's written in, and depending on if it's open source or not, there may be ways to optimize or to get around the developer having to officially support it, right? Um, something like OBS, for example, could be compiled to run on ARM, and there is some YouTube videos I've seen doing that, but on like the Pi, for example, doesn't seem very responsive, which makes sense. I mean, video is hard to process, um, you know, in real time on a desktop PC with like a nice graphics card even. Well, maybe not hard, but you know, it takes a lot of resources. Um, but on the other hand, if you compare that to, you know, something like a web browser or something, that makes a little more sense. And you can definitely compile those for that. 
for the non-compiled languages like Python, for example, I have been able to move code from x86 to the Raspberry Pi uh, ARM64 processor without having to do anything at all, right? And yes, I'm aware the processor is made by Broadcom, but anyway, the, well, the SOC. Anyway, <laughs> it's getting complicated. Anyway, um, SOC uh, system on a chip. I don't want to edit this too much. I just want it to be kind of rambly, so I apologize if you don't like that. But anyway, just want it to be kind of off the cuff. But anyway, what I'm trying to get to here is, is that I do think that if you're using the interpreted languages, it's going to be a little bit of an easier uh, ride towards the move away from x86 because at least in my experience and the code that I have written in things like Python and PHP, there's nothing I've had to do that, that changed at all when I moved it to a uh, uh, an ARM64 or an ARM32 bit processor. Okay, I've not had any issues in that area. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I just may not have run into them, but from what I understand, it's a compiled language that you're going to be dealing with this more on. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not an expert on moving from architecture to architecture. So if someone in the comments is and would like to um, enlighten the audience and myself on this issue some more, uh, that would be great. Uh, feel free to leave that comment. Uh, I'd like to read it uh, if there is one or more than one. But anyway, just a quick video I have for you today. Basically, again, the long story short or the... Uh, didn't listen, didn't read version is point blank. I do believe that we are going to see a move towards ARM processors in the desktop, but I don't think it's going to happen overnight. Okay. Again, we're waiting on software developers. That's a big thing. The other big thing we got to think about with this move, if you ask me, is this the professionals and enterprise customers, they are usually the slower moving customers in the computing space. So do I think they are going to move to ARM64 tomorrow? No, not even on the Apple side. And I suspect that Apple will make the Mac Pro their last machine to move to ARM64. I could be wrong, but I suspect that is likely going to be the case. Pros generally, like I have said here, don't move as fast. Enterprise customers, the same thing. And I do think that Windows, for example, will probably likely keep supporting x86 for a long time. And I do think that it will take a while for ARM to gather that marketplace. What I suspect is Linux and Mac OS will first get ARM support at a high enough number of applications and such that more users move to it. This is my suspicion that we will see ARM take off on Mac OS and on Linux first. And I think that's partially because that we are smaller sections of the computing base. And from what I can gather, enterprise customers still use Windows heavily more than anything else. And so I think that we're going to see that, for example, Walmart and these stores like that that have these self checkouts. I don't think they're going to replace all those with computers running ARM processors next week. On the other hand, though, to be fair, maybe they already are running ARM processors. I don't think they are. Um, I've seen... Um, at least in my local store, that they are running, uh, what is it, Windows, it's Windows Embedded, and I believe, I'm trying to think, it was, I think it's the version of Windows Embedded before they added ARM support. They may not even have ARM support on Windows Embedded at all. Because um, I'm not actually sure, I should probably look that up before I talked about this, but again, off the cuff. Anyway, long story short, I don't think that stuff's gonna change overnight, okay? So the early adopters, we're going to probably deal with it first. And I, I don't know if I'm really going to count myself as an early adopter here because I do kind of want to get an M1 Mac actually uh, for video editing. Uh, the performance you're getting out of them seem pretty nice if you can, if you ask me. Uh, and then the fact that Linux is, is being worked on to be able to move there too, that's nice. So I would have a machine I can run Mac OS and Linux on. And my two favorite operating systems is Mac OS and Linux for those that are rendering. So, you know, that would be a perfect computer for me. Anyway, yeah, so we're going to have to wait and see about the ARM move though. Let me know in the comments on this video what you think is going to happen in the ARM transition with Mac OS the potential one in Linux and in Windows. And until next time, thank you so much for watching Open Source Tonight. See you next time, everybody. Goodbye. That's right. I'm a software developer. It's all my fault. I mean, well, maybe not just mine, but. Hi, everybody. Vincent here. <clears throat>